Hey guys, welcome to another edition of K-Cards Baseball. Thanks for joining me tonight on this fine Tuesday evening out there, wherever you might be. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, basically the junk wax era and whether or not it has returned. One of the subscribers um, a few um, weeks ago in the comment section uh, made that comment that he thinks that the junk wax era has returned. I kind of blew it off at the time. Didn't really think much about it um, because uh, I didn't think that it was at all possible. And then uh, last Friday, I was actually in a Walmart and looking at the products that they had. I was actually looking for Stadium Club to see if they had blasters out yet, um, but they didn't. And I was quite surprised at what I saw. Um, they had, their shelving was all full of old product. It was all full of Panini, as we know, Panini really doesn't move very well. Um, Chronicles and Optic and Prism and Select and all that type of stuff was just sitting there, as well as um, quite a bit of Topps product as well. Um, they had a bunch of Series 1 um, that was actually marked down to $15 a box for a blaster box, being that the product is basically a year old now. They had a bunch of Update. Um, they had a bunch of Chrome Update. Um, they had Archives. They had Heritage. They had High Numbers. Um, just a lot of product out there that doesn't seem to be moving at all. It did get me to thinking about how this has all happened um, and why we are kind of in this state within the industry where boxes aren't moving as much as what they used to, particularly the blaster boxes and retail product is not moving like it used to. So I think what um, Tops in particular, I, just, I can just basically talk about Tops because I don't know enough about Panini to talk about it with a, any sort of a expert opinion, or I can just speculate um, on what I've seen. But uh, Topps got a little bit more knowledge about that product and um, about what is going on with Topps. So, in talking about Topps, what I have seen is that during the pandemic era, as we all know, um, you couldn't keep baseball cards or sports cards in general on the on the shelves. Um, it was selling out as quickly as um, as it was getting in the store. I remember during that time, um, like I said, I spend a lot of time in Target stores in my regular job, my daytime job. So I remember there were times that I would go into the store on stocking day, get there at eight o'clock in the morning, and there would be a line outside the door. And I asked uh, my contact people inside Target what the story was, and they always said, um, people lining up for Pokemon and sports cards. So that kind of set an alarm off with me. So that became pretty clear um, that during that pandemic era, um, the, the manufacturers could produce as much product as they wanted to and not so much worry about having it sit on the shelves at all. But once the pandemic era ended, people stopped collecting. They went back to work and didn't do as much, uh, haven't had as much free time on their hands. So they did Basically, they stopped collecting at that point. Um, and with that being said, the uh, manufacturers, Tops and others, um, but continued to produce products because they wanted to maintain the same amount of revenue that they were used to getting during the pandemic era when their sales were basically through the roof. So they continued to produce, it seems, at a high level, um, overproducing cards, and just because they wanted to maintain that high level that they were um, used to during the pandemic era. So they didn't want to see their revenue drop off. So also I did a quick analysis as far as their releases go and tops in particular, just again, focusing on tops. Um, so last year in 2023, now this is just calendar year 2023. I didn't add in, for example, Stadium Club that came out last week, uh, which is a 2023 release, but it was released in 2024. So I just looked at releases in 2023 calendar year and Topps and Bowman combined came out with a total of 41 different releases of product during the course of 2023. Now you compare that back to 2014, 10 years ago. Um, at that time, Tops came out with 27 releases during the course of the year between Tops product and Bowman. Um, so that is 14 additional releases last year compared to 10 years ago. Um, and it seems like a lot of new product that they're coming out with um, wasn't available 10 years ago. Cosmic Chrome, um, for example, Inception, for example, Sapphire, 
um, chrome black, um, pristine, um, just looking at some of them gilded, the Brooklyn collection, black and white, uh, tops black or chrome black. Those are all new collections since 2014. So those are all new higher end collections that have come out. And um, that is basically made collecting um, for the everyday collector pretty hard to stay um, within the industry on a budget. Um, some of those products are crazy priced and even with them coming out with Bowman Draft at the end of the year and not releasing an a hobby box, I'm just releasing it in jumbo box format for 550 and 750 for the jumbo or super jumbo box or whatever the heck it was called. Um, kind of made it very difficult for us to collect at the end of the year when we didn't have that kind of money to spend. Another contributing factor that I think is affecting the sale of box prices or retail or boxes in general is the growth of the investor, the sports card investor. The guys that go out there and just um, solely invest in singles as opposed to buying boxes. Um, there's all kinds of guys that you can look at on the internet and YouTube videos of guys that just are interested in sports cards for a collecting and investment type of basis. They know that, and we all know, um, that the return on investment when you buy a box is pretty minimal. Very rarely does, it, uh, does a situation occur where you spend even $25 for a blaster box where you get that return on investment. I mean, heck, you can go out and buy a Panini product, um, whether that be Select or um, Chronicles, and you're going to spend $25 to $30 for a blaster box, and you might get $5 to $10 worth of cards. So, um, you know, a lot of the investors now don't even bother buying boxes, and you know, it doesn't make much sense. For me, I still like buying boxes just because it is the thrill of the hunt. It is um, the feeling that you get when you do crack open that pack or open up that pack and make a major hit. Um, it's almost like Christmas morning in some ways. Um, it really is exciting, and that to me is collecting. Just going out and buying singles, um, there's no thrill in that. Um, you get much more thrill out of buying packs and opening up packs, and I think that, that the people that are still buying packs, that um, is largely the reason why they continue to do it. But again, the growth of the single side of the industry has really impacted the sales of box products as a whole. And also the growth of breaks, as you guys know too. Um, you can go on all kinds of YouTube channels now that do box breaks. And, and for those collectors, including myself, that um, can't afford to go out and buy a box of Bowman Draft, for example, might invest in a break, online break, where they can buy a team or that type of thing and buy all the cards within that box that you're going to, uh, from that team within that box or boxes in this, in, in whatever case may be, and just uh, collect cards that way um, where they don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money. So that um, I think is really contributing to the reduction in sales of boxes and retail in general as well. It also was a little bit concerning to me as you look at tops, um, is that, is it going to get any better? Um, is tops going to start making it more valuable for people to go out and buy boxes. I mean, we aren't, us as collectors, we aren't fools. I mean, there's a reason why those Panini products are sitting on shelves. I mean, no one's gonna go out there and consistently spend $25 for a blaster box and only get $10 in cards. As you guys know, I did a couple of videos, a lot of shorts recently buying NBA hoops. Um, I was spending $25 for a blaster box of NBA hoops and I think I bought either four or five of them until I finally got the Wemby. But that I was only getting five to ten dollars in cards in return, um, so it got to the point where do I continue to want to do this and go out and spend this money when I can just go on eBay and buy a single a Victor win by a single uh, for ten dollars rather than spending twenty five dollars for a blaster box, and uh, so the return on investment wasn't that great. Obviously, I did it for uh, the channel and to help the channel and that type of thing, but it was getting to the point where I couldn't. Uh, make sense of me going out there and continuing to spend money on products that I wasn't getting a return on the investment. And that's just an example of a situation that we're in now with boxes, whether you buy a hobby box or a blaster box, um, it's very rare that you will get a return on investment for that, um, for that box. I know 
this past year, one situation where I did buy a, a, a hobby box of Topps Chrome, I did get a Gunnar Henderson rookie card, number to four ninety nine. Well, that obviously paid for that hobby box, but that's more the exception rather than the rule. Um, and now with Topps going into and cutting cards, um, for example, um, this year in Series 1 and last year in Update, um, they have cut the number of packs that you get from 24 down to 20, and they cut the number of cards per pack from 14 down to 12. So you can expect that when you get Series 1, if you buy a hobby box, um, you're going to get four less packs and two less cards per pack. So that basically is 96 less cards than what you got last year in Series 1. But the amount of money you're going to spend is going to be the same. So you're going to get 30% less cards, but spend the same amount of money than what you did last year. Um, so with that being said, is is okay, but you better get the return on the investment. Um, there better be, there should be more autographs in there, more parallels, uh, more short printed stuff, uh, more hits basically that we have a chance to get as opposed to last year. Now, if they reduce the cards and leave the amount of hits the same as what you got last year, then I don't think that us as collectors are going to continue to spend that money when we can just go out and buy the four or five hot rookies that are going to come out there, the, the Alley De La Cruzes, and buy their rookie cards. And rather than spending the money for the 90 bucks or 100 bucks for a hobby box or 175 for a jumbo box or even $25 for a blaster box, when there's only really two or three high quality rookies that we can get out of that particular box. So I think what I think the best course of action for Tops is going forward is to cut the amount of releases. Do we really need 41 releases during the course of the year? Do we need really 10 Bowman releases? You know, Bowman, Bowman Bass, Bowman Chrome, blah, blah, blah. Do we really need that? Do we need 31 different Tops releases during the year? Do we need to have that many high-end products? So I think the Tops really has to take a look at the return on if they're getting the revenue or the profit that they're looking for for all their releases and can they cut releases and um, increase the quality of the releases that they have during the year. If they go back to 27 releases as, to, as opposed to 41 um, and increase the quality of those 27 releases to make it more, um, more affordable for the daily collector and more um, justifiable for the daily collector to go out there and buy boxed product um, because they can possibly have a higher return on their investment um, then I think that that's something Tops really needs to look at otherwise I think that, tr that those trends are going to continue I think we'll have more people get into just buying singles and rather than buying box product and um, buying more into breaks and you'll see the breaking industry continue to increase online uh, because you will have more people investing that way. Or also just have more people continue to drop out of the sports card uh, collecting uh, hobby as a general rule. And that would be sad. I mean, our goal as collectors is to always try and grow the business and to grow the hobby as much as we possibly can. I mean, I try and do it um, through the avenues such as this and having a, having a YouTube channel and um, talking to collectors and I'm really uh, trying to sell the hobby as a general rule, bringing my kid into the industry and into the hobby that um, he's going to have for the rest of his life and hopefully someday pass down to his kids. We don't want to see people leave the hobby. So I think that uh, Tops and uh, Panini um, need to really look at that. I mean, I don't know how much longer Panini can really make it viable revenue-wise for them to continue to be in the baseball card realm without having the licensing. So continue to do it the way they did last year where they just had um, Hall of Fame players and, and old time, older time players and uh, prospects that currently aren't in Major League Baseball. I don't know how much longer Panini can do that because clearly their product isn't really selling and uh, because there isn't the return on their investment that they can... They can try and uh, jazz it up as much as they can, um, but I don't think it's really working. I don't. I actually don't think the quality of their product is that great either. So I don't know how much longer Panini can be around. I mean, they do um, the basketball and the football stuff, but again, that product really isn't moving either. So it's a little bit concerning to me. Um, we might end up going back to just one card company. Um, we might just end up going back to just tops for the big three sports for baseball, basketball, and football. 
Um, I don't know how much, you know, I know that Upper Deck just signed an extension with um, um, NHL Hockey um, to remain the, the trading card provider for NHL Hockey, the exclusive trading card trading card provider for NHL Hockey. So they've got a good relationship there with the NHL. Um, so I don't see, see Tops being able to get back into that sports card industry in the NHL, but um, they could do something with Panini. So that is yet to be determined. So that, anyways, that's my thoughts on it. That's my thoughts on where we're at in the sports card industry. Uh, so I would be very curious to hear what you guys have to say um, about it and about uh, if you guys agree with me or don't agree with me, please drop them down in the comments down below. would definitely like to hear what your guys' feedback would be, and we can have a really good debate about it and uh, and talk about it going uh, forward into future videos and that type of thing. So anyways, if you could drop your comments, I would appreciate it. Um, also, if you like the content and like what we do on the channel, definitely hit that like and subscribe. It would uh, definitely helps me out a lot, and I would appreciate any subscriptions that I would get um, for any type of new viewers to the channel. I'm very open to ideas that you guys would have for any type of content you want to see on the channel. Um, I would be very open to hear what you guys have to say. So anyways, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Um, we had a little audio problem, so hopefully everything worked out. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyways, thanks again, guys, and we will talk at you guys later. Go to sleep.